We are live. So this is the Pace Happiest Hour, and I'm here with Allison Pill and Nick Offerman. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Hello. Hello. <laughs> this is so fun. So we are live. That was so this is the Pace <laughs> Happiest Hour, and I'm here so with Allison Pill so and Nick Offerman. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Hello. Oh my gosh. Hello. So one second, <laughs> I've got so us fun. on. So we are live. That was so this is the Pace <laughs> Happiest Hour, and I'm here so with... There we are. That was insane. I was in... Loopy it's land like you were there. In, you were in devs. You were in the it devs. It was devs. Yeah. I was seeing the future about one second ahead. <laughs> so I want to talk about devs. I've been watching the show. I love this show. What has it been that drew both of you to the script? That's just mind blowing. Allison. Um, I mean, I think mind blowing is exactly the the descriptor because the science, the physics behind it, the the ideas behind it are truly like explosive to human brains. Um, it's just really hard to to comprehend. They feel uh, irrational in the way that we think about um, things that happen in the world, but they are physically still happening. Like just quantum physics itself is a mind bender. So, so yes, like some of the ideas in it were definitely appealing. I've also just been a huge fan of Alex's. I don't think there's a whole bunch of smarter people working out there today. Like I just, um, in a lot of different fields, I just think he's, uh, he's really good at his job. He's really good at condensing difficult concepts into highly dramatic, well-told narratives that are weird and subversive and fun to watch. How about you, Nick? Uh, well, I, uh, I feel the same way in terms of uh, the information that I got first was Alex Garland wants to meet with you for a project. And so, uh, in, you know, Allison has sort of a much more uh, tony and, and venerable career, even though she's a couple of decades younger than me. Um, but for me to get that information uh, was astonishing. Like, and so I didn't need to read any scripts. <laughs> like, you know, so I got a call that said basically Kubrick wants to have coffee. And, um, and so I was on board because I'm crazy about his work. And then I read it and said, holy cow, I, I just feel incredibly lucky if I get to work with this group of people on this writing. Yeah. Well, with Ex Machina and Annihilation, he's really embraced this sci-fi world and really looking particularly at how technology can just be a scary thing, as we've just learned right here. I'm terrified by it right now. Um, the, the show deals a lot with like tech, the advances of technology on one hand, but also these big concepts like free will on the other side. Um, diving into that part of the work, is that something that excites you guys to just pulling with these deep questions? I, yeah. I felt like a, a lot of the time during shooting, I kept, I would say to the cast member, my cast mates, uh, it's clear that, that a great novelist has written this because um, it does constantly pull you between the straight, cold, technical science of what's going on, but that's so laden with philosophy and with the big existential questions, um, which is, you know, as you pointed out, that's what Alex seems to be fascinated with. When we funny monkeys get our technology amazing enough, when it's good enough, what are we dumb, flawed humans? What kind of trouble are we going to get into when our toys become too powerful? And so, for for me, I just was in a constant state of fascination of, of you know, the writing was so good that that uh, you know, day to day, all you, all I really had to do was try and play my scenes as best I could. But then stepping back and, and considering the subject matter, 
it was a, a really fun push and pull between the humanity of the story and the greater sort of universality of the topics. And I also think the, um, the, the concepts, like even the cold scientific concepts are brought into, um, you know, the world of humanity in really interesting ways. Cause like determinism as a scientific concept, you know, that, that seems most mathematically probable, like the many worlds principle, which seems, you know, like people, people believe in potentially, you know, like, like these, um, it, it's more about looking at the actual human reaction to or understanding of these concepts, like the moral implications, the philosophical implications, the spiritual implications of what happens if everything we've ever done was what we were always going to do and that the, uh, that free will is a complete illusion. And what does that do to, uh, what does that do to different human brains? You know, I think like each character takes on these big philosophical questions in different ways, which I think is, you know, brings it into humanity's um, wheelhouse in a really interesting way beyond just the, the, the scientific aspect of it. That's great. And Allison, you've done a lot of sci-fi lately with this and Picard. How was being part of that franchise? Uh, it was awesome. Yeah, I we left Manchester at like the end of February and I wasn't sure what would be coming up next. And um, I got a call about Picard to, to start shooting it here in the summer. And I was like, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> um, I, am a, I am a sci-fi fan um, uh, and have been for a while. I mean, but, it's, but it is relatively recent. I was much more a fantasy nerd growing up. Than, than sci-fi nerd, um, and uh, and and there's just so much there's so much good sci-fi out there, like Octavia Butler and Ursula Le Guin, and like these. I think I think it's such a perfect genre for looking at the failures and hopes of humanity. Um, you know, moving it to another planet gives us enough distance to look at it. You know, setting it. In these in these kind of rarefied spaces to us now, but that you know these these tech companies that are in existence and are working on quantum computers, like the ability to sort of explore, like speculate on these on these possibilities. Well, Alex does that so well, um, and t today is the finale. You can watch the last episode of this mini series, Devs. Um, have you guys, you have family that have watched this and helped you process through just the craziness of this? What, what do you think of the reaction of fans to this, to the show? Well, it's, uh, it's interesting, you know, uh, having a show that I, I think I can say, speak for both of us when I say something that has been this meaningful and, and unique and, uh, and gratifying as an artistic experience to have it be revealed to the public during this strange sort of unprecedented shelter at home worldwide you know quarantine pandemic situation um and i don't i don't go looking for a lot of uh i don't look at all the reviews and and you know like seek out reactions but the, the reactions that I am aware of um, are very gratifying in that people seem to really feel the same way that it's a very special piece of work um, and that is a comfort you know it's nice to have that that rich escapism in this strange time when there's so much hardship to deal with across the board yeah it, that's been a thing universally where we're all stuck at home and everybody's got that thing that's helping them get this through, get, helping get them through this, whether that's a book, a TV show, an album, are there things that you guys have latched onto that, that's been sort of that bomb in, in this time? Mm. We've been, we've been, um 
We just set our butterflies free this morning. We got a little caterpillar kit for homeschool situation. We just set four of our five butterflies free this morning. So for the wow. last three weeks, it's been like, that's been like a pretty big thing that's been getting me through. <laughs> and this morning, finally having this moment, my daughter was like able to get a butterfly on her finger as she like took it out of its little tent. You know, and you're like watching these chrysalids and they, I mean, it's, it's, it's really insane what these butterflies do, what these caterpillars do to themselves and these little, I mean, it's just crazy. And having that to sort of focus on has been a real bomb for the soul. That's Let's fantastic. See. How long did it take to go from these caterpillars to letting them go? Like three weeks. Wow. Yeah, they, they, they're caterpillars for a long time. They're, they're in their chrysalids for a long time. And then, and then, they, then they hatch, they come out and they start doing their thing. It's very exciting. That's so fun. How about you, Nick? Well, I've, I've been reading. My wife and I love doing puzzles, so there's a lot of jigsaw puzzles happening. Um, I'm uh, reading. Um, the, the, we both loved the uh, the book, The Overstory, by Richard Powers, which yeah. won the Pulitzer last year. I'm reading an earlier novel of his called Galatea 2.2, which is uh, really fascinating and and sort of dealing with some of the same concepts. It's an older book but it uh he, he's got a similar sort of brilliance to alex's writing and um I, I just finished alex's second novel called the tesseract i'm kind of going back and filling in my gar the garland hole yeah. wait a minute wait wait just a tick didn't you say you'd already read the tesseract no i read i read it at the beach no i know but, you did you hadn't read the tesseract no i uh, when we were together, I, I got a copy of it. You got a copy of it. To sign oh, it for me. Took you, took you a while. Huh. It, it has. There's, there's, there's a, like, a, a longer story. Yeah. Uh, out of, it's that it was, it was, it was literally out of my hands for months. But uh, yeah, you um, are. No, right. I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna text Alex and be like, he doesn't like you that much. You are right to shame me. <laughs> So what about writing, Nick? You've got three books under your belt. Are you spending any time on, on number four here? Um, I, uh, well, number, number four, actually, um, Megan and I had a book come out last year that I count as my fourth, even though it, she really did all the, the hard stuff. Um, but, but I am, yeah, I'm, a, I am actually gearing up for number five, uh, and I'm, I'm in the homework phase. Um, so I'm, I'm, reading i was supposed to go i made friends with this uh shepherding family in the lake district in england and i uh i've bought a cow to add to their herd uh, i'm sort of fascinated with uh supporting and learning all of us learning about locally sourced food and getting back to an agrarian sensibility which has become very clear during this time when we suddenly don't want to be shipping in food from all over the world. Um, and I was really, I was supposed to be there right now helping them, it's lambing time. And uh, I'm quite heartbroken that I, I'm not there getting to clumsily screw something up for them that I could then turn into a hilarious anecdote for book fun. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm kind of re-strategizing. Say what? Half was just amazing to see. It's crazy. I mean, uh, he's he and his wife are very amazing on Instagram. Uh, he's called Herdy Shepherd. James Rebanks is his name, and it's like a TV channel where, especially right now, his his ewes are dropping lambs all day long, and so you've got these pastoral landscapes. You've got you know everything from from beautiful, cute uh, lambing to more realistic and and dire. You know, like. You're always going to lose a, a handful of your lambs, uh, as nature would have it. So, it, that's another way that I'm escaping, and somehow, you know, I guess I'll be writing about watching their lambs be born on social media. <laughs> Sadly, <laughs> I'm sorry that you're missing that, but I, I love the nature theme here of of getting through this. I've been like birding, like just in my backyard, like. Got a little bird feeder. I'm like, oh, cool, house finches. You know, just 
just to have that connection still to things happening outside of my household. It's the best. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, Allison sent a couple pictures of the chrysalis, uh, and just that. I mean, and that's something that I appreciate about this moment is that so much of the world is being made to stop, you know, to, to get off the consumerism merry-go-round and say, look at these astonishing butterflies or tiny birds in my yard that I, I've never had time to notice, and my God, are they magnificent. Yeah. And delicious. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, Nick, I have to thank you because back in 2013, when you were on the cover of Paste, you wrote us a song, and that was one of the coolest things I thought <laughs> that we had. The, writing a song about being on the cover of Paste, that was such a fun thing that you did for us. Well, that's, that's generous. We, we call that over-egging the pudding in my house. But I'll, I'll take it since, since you're my host. <laughs> so um, we have a charity that we highlight every day. And Nick, you chose today's char charity. You want to tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, I mean, uh, well, before I do that, I, I want to applaud Allison and her husband. Spent the last week, they did this great thing because there's so much going on right now and there's so many places that need help for, from those of us that can afford to lend help. And so it can be very scattering and, and kind of chaotic. And Allison and her husband did this cool thing where each day they chose one charity to feature on their social media, which I really appreciated and thought was a really smart and generous idea. Um, I, uh, I'm about to... I'm about to launch uh, a website that's been, I don't even want to go back and count how long I've been doing this, but um, for many months I've been trying to get it together to put these comedy specials that I have online for the handful of people that might want to see them. Uh, there, there's three of them, there's four, of, four I guess now, no three, there's gonna be three. And, um, and so it's weird because we finally, my helper, my, you know, people who know how to use the web, uh, we've finally gotten it together and it's finally time, but you can't really do that in good conscience right now because uh, of, of what's going on. And so I said, okay, uh, let's, let's do this in a way, um, like let's basically, let's launch the comedy specials, but, uh, but give all proceeds to a charity and so we looked around, we did some research, and the, the sort of most consistent and best idea that I could come up with, uh, which sort of is, is vetted and covers uh, the whole country, is America's Food Fund, which DiCaprio is given to and, and Oprah is behind and, and chef uh, Jose Andres, who is the wonderful and heroic character um, I've uh, I've hung out with him a few times, and he, and he, among other things, taught me the ideal way to hard boil an egg. And uh, I just think, in this day and age, you know, he's one, he's one of the uh, the greatest uh, leaders when it comes to to identifying the good work that needs doing, and saying, hey, everybody, like let's drop all, all the politics. Here, these people need paella. Who's got rice? Who's got shrimp? Who's got matches? Let's let's do this. And I, uh, so you know, to me that seems like a good general uh, uh, way to cover as many people as possible. Well, that uh, the link is in the YouTube comments, so you can go there if you're watching. And you know, I know a lot of people don't have money to give right now with everybody losing jobs, but. But if you do, that's a great charity. Um, check it out and uh, pitch in. So Nick, how quickly after you finished filming did you get rid of the gigantic bushy beard? Or was that? Uh, pretty quickly. Uh, uh -huh. I mean, you know, I had, I maintained that across uh, six months or so that we were filming. And I also had to keep a, a bald shaved head because because I wore a wig that had a lot of bald on top. And so um, 
by and large, you know, whether I'm doing a, a run of a play or a TV series or this felt this felt like an eight hour film. Um, by the time you're you're done by closing night or you wrap the film, I'm I'm always ready to then you strike the set, but I also strike the character from my person. So the character's done. And so quite often, um, if it's the theater, I show up at the closing night party, uh, you know, sh clean shaven or whatever, because it's over. Um, or you so grow a beard in like 20 minutes. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I quit shaving. Um, so, or, uh, you know, in this case, you have to wait to make sure all the rushes or all like, you know, all the scenes are safe and sound. Um, but yeah, pretty quickly. And my, my wife is very tolerant. She, she puts up with the craziest facial hair, but then as soon as it's not needed, she's like, okay, I'd like, I'd like your face back, please. <laughs> That's great. And Allison, um, are you finding opportunities to do creative things while you're at home right now? Uh, you've been acting nonstop, it seems, for you know the last decade. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm starting to, I've been inspired by a lot of these um, play reading fundraisers. So we're, my friends and I are thinking about trying to get something going there. But honestly, it's um, a lot of my creativity is now going to homeschool hours and trying to entertain a toddler kid person and keep, keep everything going over here. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's bread baking. We made some pretty interesting, weird uh, muffins the other day that ended up being delicious if, as my husband said, you don't consider them muffins. So, you know, there's Fair that. Enough. Enough. <laughs> ah, that's great. All right, well, we're going to bring in our, our next guest here, see if this works. Uh, Crossing our fingers. E? Here's Patterson. Yay! There he is. Yay. We got Patterson Yay. Hood of the Drive-By Truckers here. Yay! So we like to, in the middle of every show, um, everybody grab a drink. I, in honor of Patterson today, I have a drink straight from Athens. You're probably seeing that backwards, but this is um, Creature Comforts, Athena Paradiso. It's this beautiful red beer. It's Yum. red? Ooh. Red beer? It is. This is a no, I love the Creature Comforts. Their, their Bebo is one of my favorite beers. Raspberry Cranberry. Ooh. Yeah, Bebo's fantastic. I wish I had one of those. I can't do no cranberry in my beer, though. <laughs> I, I believe that about you, Patterson. All right. Well, I'm I'm so, I'm, I'm on uh, West Coast time, so uh, uh, I haven't I haven't switched from my trusty coffee yet to my first beer of the day. But uh, but uh, we can we can we can toast with that. That's great. So just like Thanksgiving, everybody, we're going to go around and somebody that you're thankful for in this time. I will say everybody who's um, still working to produce food because yeah. that is essential labor. And a lot of people are putting themselves at risk for not a ton of pay and and getting that done and i just want to say cheers to them cheers to that cheers. Cheers. how about you nick i'll raise my bottle of water uh tito's potato water hand squeezed um <laughs> to to the medical workers uh, i have a couple Ooh. of nurses and a paramedic in my family and good lord i mean like like our school teachers they are so taken for granted and underpaid and in this moment they are the hall of justice they are the super friends uh fearlessly stepping up and taking care of all of us so here's to them here's to that yeah. allison first what are you drinking there and who are we toasting i got minty water minty we have a farm box speaking of people who grow food we got a farm box coming from a local farm which is great so signed up for a month of these and then we get mint every week 
So now I'm just like a mint water a holly. Oh, that's here. fantastic. Um, I would like to uh, raise a glass um, to all of the cleaning staffs of all the medical facilities and hospitals and freaking all of that because as yes underpaid and underrespected our nurses paramedics and doctors are as this becomes obvious the people cleaning and trying to keep those spaces safe are also incredibly um it, you know in 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 the same amount of danger and, and being um yeah I would just like to pay my respects to those guys. Absolutely. Cheers. 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 And Patterson, how about you? I mean, God, it goes on and on. You know, the, um, I mean, here's to, you know, everybody who's trying to do the right thing. People who are really trying at, at great, you know, all kinds of sacrifice trying to, to, to stay away from people they love in order to try to protect them. And, uh, and uh, you know, and I mean, I can't even wrap my head around all the horrors going on from the, from the, you know, the people who are sick and, and people who we've lost and, and uh, all the way to, you know, the, the businesses, the small businesses, you know, that, that, uh, that, uh, it's, that are, you know, some of which will never reopen. And it's, it's, it's a, it's a horror story. So here's to everyone doing what they can to get us all through this and, uh, and hopefully to, to the other side, to where a, a better other side. Cheers. Cheers. All right. Well, Nick, Allison, thanks so much for being here. Everybody can watch Devs uh, FX on Hulu. The last episode just came out and it is fantastic and everybody should tune in. Okay. Thank thanks, you so guys. Much. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Great. Well, Patterson, Wow. Hello. <laughs> you there? You there? You still there? Yeah, I'm here. Great. I'm so glad to have you on, Patterson. Man, I'm I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. It's great to great to interact with someone. Um, <laughs> great to see I a know. face that's, that's not know. my immediate family, you know, too. Because uh, I'm a I'm a kind of a social guy. I, I like going out. I like going out and seeing bands and going to record stores and eating out and you know and uh uh this is this is cut to the heart of of so many of just of so much of just who i am and uh it's really it's 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 being really kind of a struggle in, in that way in addition to all the other ways so yeah uh, well that's so it, why i wanted to start this like i wanted to just connect to people every day and i've been doing that with some friends over zoom and i thought we don't have the studio. Let's let's keep Happiest Hour going. Right. So you're dialing in from Portland. Is that where you are Portland, now? Portland, Oregon. Yeah, I live in Portland. I've been here almost five years now. So tell me about that move. Uh, you've been a southern boy all your life. Alabama, Georgia. How was yeah the change to the West Coast? Yeah. That was so much of it. You know, it's like I it. I mean, growing up, I was always gonna leave i was going to go do something else and i found myself in my 50s realizing that you know i'd spent my entire life in alabama and georgia and uh i mean i'm i travel a lot i'm obviously i'm i'm you know my i, I live on the road or used to live on the road you know 100 to 200 days a year and uh and so uh so you know i've i've been i've been outside of those two places a lot of my life and uh but as far as where you call home i wanted to experience living somewhere else i wanted to live somewhere that wasn't so damn hot in the summer because uh i really I, I, I never liked hot weather and hot summers even as a kid and the older i got the more uh the more i hated that and uh and I, I, I wanted to experience just a different culture and a different a different life, you know. And we didn't know if we were going to be here for a year or if we were going to stay. It was just kind of a, 
something, you know, my wife and I were kind of in the same boat about all of that. And so we kind of got to have our midlife crisis together. And uh, uh, so, uh, and, and this is what we did. We moved out here and, um, you know, it's, it's been, it's been the hardest thing ever. And it's been, it's been kind of brutal in some ways, but it's also been amazing. I mean, it's, 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 um, we've been treated wonderfully and accepted here. And, um, I think it's been good for me artistically. I think it's been good for my writing, just the, the, the reset button it kind of put my brain through or the buttons it put my brain through. I think it's turned out to be a good thing for our kids. Uh, uh, the jury was out for the first few years on that, but I think it's turned into a good thing for them too. Uh, so we're, you know, we've built a kind of beautiful life out here, but, uh, uh, you know, and it's also made me, I think, love, in some ways it's made me love the South more because it's given me a filter to where I'm not being beat down just by the daily uh, political aspects. You know, uh, uh, it's, it's, you know, Kemp can still piss me off even cross country. <laughs> even cross country, right? yeah. But, uh, but, but the fact that I've got about 2,500 miles helps a little yeah. bit. <laughs> yeah, we did. We did a few years in the Midwest, and it does change your perspective on where you come from when you've gone away from it for a while. Yeah, it's but you really make me enjoy the time when we're touring when I'm touring the South more. Because yeah. when I lived there and I'd lived there for fifty years, it's like God, I'm on tour and I'm still here, you know. And uh, and now it's like, oh man, I can really revel in in uh, you know. In, in in the kind of exoticness of because it is you know yeah. the south is a it's a weird place and and i can really kind of revel on the things about it that i love more having you know the fact that i'm visiting a little bit now yeah well you just came out with the trucker's 12th album and i was looking today and you would have been in north carolina on tour today so you would have been in the south yeah, Ash Yep. But we're so glad to have you here. You're going to play us a couple songs today. What are you going to play first? Um, since we have a new record that uh, we're supposed to be out touring behind, I guess I should play a song off that first. And uh, right. it's uh, a song called 21st Century USA and uh, wrote it uh, on tour, uh, on, on the road. We, were, uh, we had an off day. We were driving from, uh, uh, God, uh, North Dakota to... Uh, Missoula, Montana, and uh, we had to stop for that required, legally required stop that your bus driver is supposed to make, uh, so that hopefully he takes a nap and doesn't kill you. And uh, we happen to be at an off ramp off I ninety uh, in outside of Gillette, Wyoming, and we were staying at a Holiday Inn Express and. Uh, for like 12 out 14 hours or something and we were all hungry so we we're gonna all check in our rooms and go meet and walk to this like three-star yelp rated mexican place a couple of blocks away and uh i walked out of the door of the motel and our bus it was you know it was january so it was very cold there and a lot of a lot of ice and you know weak old snow and stuff and our bus is sitting there underneath the giant billboard that said oasis tanning salon and by the time i got to the restaurant i wrote the first verse on a napkin and then after i ate i ran home and uh, uh ran back to the room and wrote the rest of the song and it's called 21st century usa Parking lot behind Oasis Tan, down the street from the Mexican. Restaurant behind the Auto Zone, and the place is hawking payday loans. There's a Kmart and a KFC, a fitness center and an Applebee's, Wells Fargo and a Taco John's. Good time bar to get your bad swerve on. In a town that's named for razor blades, all American but Chinese made. Folks working hard for shrinking pay. 
21st century USA. Out I 90, we must see you pass. We got coal and methane gas. We got jobs where the work is hard. It stores to max out your credit cards. In a town that ain't nowhere near, just like every town everywhere, folks working hard for shrinking pay. Say we have to hang on just a little bit longer and the Savior will come our way. We'll know him by the neon sign and the opulence he maintains. If Amazon can deliver salvation, I'll order it upon my phone. But Big Brother watching me always, why must I always feel so alone? Been working hard for not enough at best. And then working just as hard for less. They get together late at night at bars and bang each other like crashing cars. Working hard, but it don't seem enough. Calloused hearts make even love seem tough. Prescription pills to make the pain hurt less. Until your calloused heart just needs a rest. Got your children and you hope and pray. They can conjure up the better day. No one remembers how it got that way. 21st century USA. First century USA. That was so great. Thank you Thank so you. much. Hope That's it sounded fantastic. okay. It sounded great. I mean, All we're right. on Zoom. This is awesome. <laughs> so, I mean, the, the thing I've always loved about the Drive-By Truckers and you as a songwriter is the storytelling of people that I feel like I've known forever. And the new album is full of it. So, Unraveling, it's your 12th album. It was the longest you taken between albums. Yeah. And tell me a little bit of recording this going into uh, um, Memphis, right? Yeah, the Sam Phillips recording service, which by the way, I'd be I'd be remiss not to mention uh, uh, one of the owners, uh, Knox Phillips passed away this week. Uh, oh. He uh, was Sam Phillips's oldest son. And um, uh, we didn't get we didn't see him much when we were making the record because he was already sick. He's been fighting cancer for a few years. And um, he and his brother, Jerry, uh, still own the place. And uh, I think Sam Phillips' granddaughter is uh, uh, one of the people who's really kind of running it and everything. So, but, uh, so rest, rest in peace, Knox Phillips. He's a really, really important part of Memphis's amazing music history. And um, so uh, uh, we're really sorry to, to see that he passed. But, um, yeah, we, we went uh, for a week. Uh, it was the studio that Sam Phillips built from scratch uh, when he sold Sun. And um, of course, for you know anybody who don't know, Sam Phillips basically invented rock and roll. And he, he was the first person to record, uh, you know, Howlin' Wolf and uh, uh, Elvis Presley and Johnny Cash, Carl Perkins, Charlie Rich, Jerry Lee Lewis. I mean, it all came out of his little son's studios. And 
he sold that in around 1960 and he built his dream studio which was like the state of the art for its time and that is sam phillips recording service and um uh, um it's like a time machine if you walk in the doors it's 1962 again and it's filled with really cool old gear uh, and everything works great and uh it also has the echo chambers that sam phillips designed and built himself into the into the actual building there's three of them of different sizes and they restored them and that was a big part of the sound of this record was uh running everything through those <laughs> echo chambers yeah. And, and, yeah. And, and, and 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 incorporating that into the sound of the various tracks and it's it's really an amazing place well it's a beautiful sound that you got out of there thank you uh you know david barbie our longtime producer you know produced this again and uh he uh also co-engineered and mixed it with uh uh, Matt Ross Spang, who's amazing in his own right, and he's worked with Margot Price and Jason Isbell and uh, uh, Lucero, and I mean he's done uh, Al Green. He's done so much amazing stuff, and uh, and he and he actually works out of that studio. So that was a big well, part of us going there. That's a couple of great people to have working on your on your for album. sure, for sure. So in the comments section here, a couple of people have noted that. Homecoming, which you played back in February in Athens, seems like four years ago. <laughs> I think it was. Um, yeah, last week seems like a year ago. And yeah. I mean, literally, you know, and uh, uh, we celebrated my birthday on the second week of being quarantined. And that was March 24th. And it seems like forever ago. Yeah. And uh, so, um, that's uh that's one of the that's one of the hard parts of this you know and and of course knowing that it's you know it it may not be it's probably not ending anytime real soon and uh so uh it's definitely a defining event of our lifetimes yeah yeah i mean somebody asked me is this more like 9 11 or world war ii and it seemed kind of in between the two. Yeah, you know, like just a little scope. bit of Great Depression thrown in. What's that? With, With the Great, Great Depression, Depression thrown in. Thrown in. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It. This is. It's. Except then we had Roosevelt, <laughs> and now we don't, and we really need Roosevelt. We do have an election coming up here in November, God willing. Yes, we do, and it's really important. I know every every four years they say this is the most important election of our lifetime, and. I don't think it's ever been as, as true as it is right now. Yeah. Well, before you play the second, your second song here, there's also a question about the Why Muscle Shoals sign in the background there. That sign, uh, I'm from Muscle Shoals. I'm uh, uh, originally grew up in uh, Florence, Alabama, which is part of the Shoals area in the northwest corner of Alabama. And uh, yeah, is your, your dad doing okay and all this? My dad's, my dad's great. Uh, he's a... Uh, uh, he's he's quarantined out at uh, their house, which is uh, on a really sweet little spot on Wilson Lake, and uh, uh, and he's got his dogs, and he's got Judy, and uh, they're 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 probably doing better than many as far as that goes, and uh, so uh, uh, and I think he's doing a good job of not going out. I'm sure Judy's making sure he 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 stays put. And everything. So, uh, so yeah, uh, Muscle Shoals is kind of semi-famous for the music history of there because during the '60s and '70s, at least beginning then, and I mean, there's still there's still a music scene there. But back in those days, all these infamous records were made there, and uh, uh, particularly by a number of soul artists, you know, Aretha Franklin and Wilson Pickett, Bobby Womack, Clarence Carter, uh, staple singers. Uh, and then it branched into other genres too. Willie Nelson recorded Faces and Stages there, and Rod Stewart, Bob Seger, and Paul Simon, Simon and Garfunkel. All these people recorded there, and my dad was part of that scene, uh, and uh, he's a bass player, David Hood, and he's part of the Muscle Shoals rhythm section. What? And uh, the sign itself that's hanging there uh, was uh, part of a display at the Muscle Shoals Airport, which is about the size of my attic it's a tiny little airport and uh but uh they had a display about the muscle shells music scene nice. uh, probably in the late 70s or early 80s and that was part of that that i was able to retrieve out of a uh, dumpster and uh oh wow 
when they were when they were moving out of the old Muscle Shell Sound building. So a few years ago, when Rick was still alive, I went with a couple other Pace folks, and we did just the pilgrimage to the studio and got the full tour. Met your dad that day. It was incredible. It was a, that was such an amazing day just to see the history of that place. It, it is a truly amazing thing. And, uh, Fame um, Studios. Yeah, the Fame Studios and then Muscle Shoal, the old Muscle Shoal Sound Building has now been restored and is back open. Uh, it acts as a museum during the day and they do tours and then at night you can record there. And I've actually went in November and recorded a few songs there, which was a, really a treat because, I mean, that was the family business when I was too young to actually still be making music myself. So, uh, so it was amazing to, as a, as a grown man to get to go in there and record with my dad playing bass in that room where That's they so recorded, cool. I'll take you there and respect yourself and all those great songs. That's great. Well, at the, and the documentary Muscle Shoals is such a beautiful documentary. So if, if anybody listening hasn't checked that out, they absolutely need to well worth it especially now that you're stuck at home <laughs> exactly and there's all kinds of places to find it streaming so yep. what are you going to play second today so um uh i wrote this song on march 20th uh i guess at around the end of my or middle of my first week quarantined and uh the the song's probably more optimistic than i am right now <laughs> but uh, uh it's um uh, uh, it felt good to write something new in the midst of all this madness. And, uh, and uh, we actually recorded it. The band has recorded it and we're going to put it out uh, uh, as a single, uh, maybe on Bandcamp or they're, they're still figuring all that stuff out, but uh, maybe around the first of next month. Um, I recorded the basic track up here in this room, which is my, uh, my attic in our house. It's a, it's a brand new room. So we've been adding onto the house. And, uh, so I was just in the process of moving into it before all the, you know, shit hit the fan. And, um, so I've got a little Tascam mobile recorder up here and I recorded it myself, just me playing it. And then we sent the tracks around to all the different band members and they all added parts to it. And then David Barbie mixed it. And uh, it's a song called Quarantine Together. So let's try it. <laughs> Looking face, I hope you don't take that the wrong way. But I saw you walking across the street, and won't want to hear what you say. And if we find ourselves later on hanging out and getting along, we might as well quarantine together. It's too miserable all along. We might as well quarantine together. Miserable all along. So if you come on over to my place, I promise you I will stay six feet away. And what if we acclimate and call us isolation today? Maybe enough time could go by and be each other's mistake. We're all waiting around to go under, and I ain't getting no younger. So might as well quarantine together, ride out the lightning and thunder. Might as well quarantine together, find the blanket to hide out under. We find ourselves later on hanging out and getting along. Might as well quarantine together. It's been miserable all along. We yeah, might as well quarantine together. It's been miserable all along. We yeah, might as well quarantine together. It's been miserable all along.
Awesome. That's so special that we got to hear that for the first time here. Thank you. Thanks for having me and uh, nice, nice toasting with y'all. And, uh, <laughs> that was fun. Happy your your happy your uh, happy hour. <laughs> that is a happy hour. So Tyler Eves asks, any news on a Hood Dickinson album? Uh, that's what we were working on at the um, Old Muscle Shell Sounds uh, Studio. Uh, obviously, everything's on hold right now. You know, the the plan was to maybe try to mix it sometime this year and maybe try to put it out next year, but. Uh, uh, you know, I don't know. Everything's on hold right now, but uh, but it 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 will happen, and uh, uh, I think we're basically through recording it. Maybe one more day of overdubs or tweaking. I'd like to re-sing a couple of things, but it's uh, um, uh, it's it's nice and weird, and uh, it's a long time coming because it's a project we started in 2007, back when Jim Dickinson was still alive. And uh, uh, it was Jim Dickinson and his sons, Luther and Cody, who were yeah. North Mississippi All-Stars, mm -hmm. and then myself and my dad. And uh, and then uh, for the recording we did back in November, of course, Jim is gone. Uh, Jim had basically said on his deathbed that when we finished the record, he wanted us to bring in Spooner Oldham to, to play any future keyboard parts. And uh, so Spooner was kind enough to come over and spend a couple of evenings with us back in November and uh, played some incredible stuff. So, uh, so I look forward to everybody hearing it someday. <laughs> That's great. Spooner was also there that day that we went and visited and man, he's got some crazy stories. Uh, I, I love I love oh Spooner Oldham. He's one of the most wonderful human beings in the entire world. To, to Spooner. To Spooner. Oh, that's so great. Well, Patterson, thanks so much for joining us today. This has been so much fun. Thank and you. congrats on the album. Um, I, I look forward to the day when I can hear some of those songs played live in the 40 water somewhere, you know. Me too. Um, yeah. Yeah, we're, 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 we're desperately eager to get out there and do this thing and go go take this show on the road and play for people and shake our ass and dance and do all those things we do. And uh, um, uh, we just got to get through this because I don't want anybody, you know, getting sick because of it. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get through this quarantine together. All right. Thank Thanks you. so much. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.